Hey guys, Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com. I want to talk to you today about elastic time in Pro Tools, and this is applicable to not just Pro Tools 10, um, but Pro Tools 9, 8, and even 7.4 when elastic time was first introduced to Pro Tools. And this is a time stretching uh, plugin that's built in to the software that you can use on any kind of audio source to stretch, change the tempo of, or lock things into place um, for audio, and it's fantastic. And I'm using it all the time when I'm editing in Pro Tools, and I'll use it on drums and vocals and bass and guitars and piano. Um, but today I just want to show you a simple example of locking a bass guitar to the click to the drums, really. And in the process, I'll show you how you can use Elastic Time to really help you tighten things up in Pro Tools quickly and so it sounds good in the process. Here I have um, some drums, bass, guitar, and piano. And just take a listen to this bass line in particular. And he played it pretty well, but see if you can hear some of his timing issues. It's not bad, it's not bad at all, but I want it to be locked nicely to the drums, especially the kick drum. I want him to kind of sit right in there with the kick so you get more impact and it sounds a little more professional. So what you can do obviously in Pro Tools or any DAW is start cutting up audio, cutting up the clips and moving the audio clips around. Um, you can also use Beat Detective to find transients and slice them, but it's kind of hard to use something like Beat Detective on something that's not as percussive as, say, a, a drum hit. So this is why I prefer, personally, to use Elastic Time when I'm trying to lock bass lines into place. To do that on a piece of audio, you go over to the track. Underneath the waveform view or whatever view you're in, there's an empty box here. If you click that, it says, basically, which algorithm of Elastic Audio would you like to analyze this track with? Because this is what this plugin is. It's built into the track. And you want to analyze it in the best way possible. Polyphonic would be for um, something that has multiple notes. Poly meaning multi-phonic. So multiple sounds, like a piano, has you hit a chord or a guitar chord. That's polyphonic. Uh, rhythmic is obviously perfect for drums and percussion. It's looking for really transient heavy material uh, that doesn't have a lot of sustain. Uh, whereas monophonic would be a one-note source, which is usually a bass line or someone singing a vocal because you can only sing one note at a time unless you've got some weird vocal chords happening. So bass line, I'm going to choose monophonic. All right. It's going to go offline for a minute while it analyzes the track because it needs to find every single transient, analyze the audio, so it's basically going to set up markers underneath the track so that you will be ready to stretch it. It'll come back online, and nothing will be different, but now it's analyzed and ready to go. What that gives us over here in the, the track view is two other views that would have been grayed out. Analysis view, which is now going to show us where they've put markers on every base transient, which is pretty cool. So it's already found the transients. And then warp view, which looks just like analysis view, only this is actually where you can then click and drag these transients around. So when you click one, double clicking, it puts a little icon underneath it, which is now saying this is a warp marker. So you can click and slide things around. Now that's pretty useless because it shifted my whole baseline around. So what you need to do is put markers on either side of where you want to edit. These become fixed points. So it will then only move this bass note in between those notes, okay? You can undo that. The simple way to do this is to hold shift, click one time, and it'll put a warp marker where you want to edit, and it'll put boundary markers on either side. So if you ever want to do some manual editing, once you've got it analyzed, that's a great way. You could hold shift, click once, and you can start adjusting. The beautiful thing is that it does it in real time. It does any kind of crossfading that needs to happen. It keeps things sounding musical. But here's what we're going to do to save time. I'm going to go back to waveform view. And I'm just going to quantize. Now that these are analyzed, I can quantize. So I'm going to select before this downbeat, which is the verse. 
and I'm going to scroll to the right all the way up to the chorus. I'm just highlighting a certain section of the song in this case. And I'm going to hold Option and hit 0. And that's going to bring up the Event Operations window. You could do that up here from the Event menu, Event Operations Quantize. Okay? But Option or Alt, 0. And it's going to know that these are elastic audio events because you're not actually going to quantize audio clips. It knows that there's elastic audio happening underneath by default. So just like you would with MIDI, you choose the, the grid. In our case, um, 16th notes should be fine. It might only be 8th notes that he plays, but let's do, he doesn't do anything faster than 16, so we can keep it there. And this is what's cool. By default, your window might look like this with nothing checked. That means it's going to lock everything to 100% to the grid, so right on the beats that you want it to lock to. You could click strength and adjust the slider from anywhere from 100% down to, you know, 0%. Um, with bass and kick drum, I kind of experiment, but I like something around 85%, so it's going to lock it pretty close to the grid, but it's going to be slightly off, so it won't be completely perfect. It gives a little bit of a human element. You could put it to 100%. This is cool. And you could randomize a percentage, so then it would be locked to the grid, but randomly 17% of the time, it'll be slightly off. Experiment with these knobs to get more of a human feel to see what you like. When you're ready, click Apply. When I hit Apply, you're going to see some of these notes shift slightly. Okay, watch, watch these notes here. I'm going to undo, and you'll see them shift back. Apply. Okay, so it was going ahead and quantizing everything I selected without me having to look at the, the messiness. Underneath, in warp view, you'll see that it added warp markers on all of those hits, and it shifted them. So if I undo, they're back. If I redo, it puts the warp markers in shift. So it did all of that without me having to look at it. Let's take a listen to see if this helped out. Really tight to the kick drum. I love it. Now here's something. In here, I don't know if this was just a rhythm he didn't know what he wanted to play. It's locked to the grid, but it sounds a little off to me. I think the bass player just didn't play along with the drummer 100%. So it's not out of time, it's just not the same rhythm. So in this case, I might want to go in manually and just adjust a few things. So this is a small little piece of audio, a small transient, so it didn't actually find or put a warp marker here. So what I'm going to do, since there's not even a warp marker here, I'm going to go ahead back to the analysis view and simply double click where I want there to be an, a, a marker. I'm just telling Pro Tools now, this is where I want you to have an, a marker in case I want to use it. Same thing here, I'm going to double click, put one there. I can zoom in a little bit, see where I'm putting it. I'm trying to move it just to right before the the transient. So now if I go back to warp view, I have these grayed out markers. I can start to slip them where I want. So let's see. Let's listen to the rhythm. So let's see if I can grab this, see what happens. Let's grab this and drag it all the way back here so it lines up with this kick drum. There you go, and you just adjusted the rhythm and the playing that he even did. Nice and tight to the grid, elastic time, it's that simple. And here's the good thing, when you're done, you can leave it as is, and it's stretched in real time, and you can always go back and make edits as you want. But if you think you are done with the editing and you want to move on, and you want to save some computer resources, because again, elastic audio is happening in real time, you can go ahead and commit this to your track. So whenever you're in doubt, duplicate this playlist so you have the original unedited version. So click Duplicate, call it Bass Edit. And now this is Bass Edit is different than my original bass. So here in Bass Edit, I can go ahead and click on the Elastic Audio plugin, choose None, 
I'm basically taking off Elastic Audio, and it gives me the final options. Do you want to revert to your original unedited track, which wouldn't be what we want, because that will be unedited, or do you want to commit these moves so write a new audio file? And that's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and commit. So it'll write a brand new audio file with the locked edited baseline, and now you don't have Elastic Audio, so you don't need it taking up computer power, and your baseline is nice and in time with the drums. Can't get much better than that. Hope this helps. Again, this is Graham at therecordingrevolution.com. We'll see you on another video.